Hello and welcome back to Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. I'm Dr. Abstract. Well, I'm half Dr. Abstract. My internet is down. <laughs> Whenever that happens, <laughs> you're not a whole person anymore. Uh, so we're doing our best here. We may not be able to take you out to the Zim site, for instance, but we do have, ta-da, a local copy, copy, <laughs> copy of Groovity, a local copy of Groovity here to look at. Groovity is a PWA, progressive web app and we're running it locally. So it usually looks like this, Groovity. And then it comes into here where the kids can play with meatballs. Oh, isn't that neat? So what we're doing today is gonna, we're gonna show you how to drag along a path like that. These paths, as we've shown you before, can be user editable as well. Um, we call these paths squiggles in blob, uh, squiggles in Zim, and then there's also blobs. Blob, well, let's take a look. Maybe we'll see a blob. So we're going to the next one here. Oh, it's a bus. And what we've got going on is the farther away it gets, the smaller it gets, and the closer it gets, the bigger it gets. So it gets bigger as it gets closer and smaller as it goes far away. Isn't that neat? So that's built in to animate as well, or into Zim Animate, we should call it. And we'll show you how to do this in Animate. This one's tricky because it goes behind the planet. Ooh, like that magic trick. <laughs> Um, so isn't this fun? They're kind of like those little wire things that you would play in a, a dentist office waiting room or something. But uh, kids should like it. Well, we may as well just go through them and see some of the ideas that you might be able to do. There were multiple things on a path, by the way, on the same path. That's, that's fine too. A monkey, a snake. Note that it flips as well. You can choose to do that. Uh, and uh, it orients along the path as well, which you can choose. Although, <laughs> this, well, you'll see the bicycle flip. Oh yeah, a little handlebar, <laughs> the Zim style. Uh, so that's the last one, except there is a sort of explanation uh, one here, which is showing you the path. And this is an editable path as well, which means if we click on it, we can um, change the path like so. One more curve. Let's give us one more curve on that. And then reset. Great, huh? So that's our user editable squiggle, or you can choose for it not to be user editable. There's also a blob. A blob is a complete uh, path or circle, like it loops. All right. Um, I can't show you how to record blobs. Well, I, I can actually, we can do that in code as well. Yeah, okay, maybe we can do that in code. But there is a, a site on, on the Zim site uh, called Pizzazz 4, where we have a, a path making tool. You can also pass in SVG paths as well, and then run that um, through Zim. Okay, so let's close this down, F11. And we'll pop into uh, Adobe Animate. I've already made a file called zim10paths.fla and I made a copy of the zim9 and then I made a slight adjustment here with the F9 saying that we're now on zim10 tutorial dragging on a path. And here's a path. I don't have internet so what I've done is I've gone to a local template and I can show you that after but I don't want to start with that it's a little messy looking so let's just make a path and carry on as if I did have internet. All right, so that would be a new squiggle. And then we'll dot center that and we will have a look. So uh, control enter and there she be. So this is the default squiggle. As you can see, it's got the beziers. Uh, by the way, you can press and add another point or shift and press to remove the point. Uh, what else can we do? We can press and hold down the control and select two points at once, like that. Uh, there, might, there might be other things to do too. Oh, you can move these with arrows too, so um, uh, your arrows. So that is, oh, I've still got multiple ones selected there. Um, that is some examples of the basic squiggle but you can also record the path, which you might want to do. So if, if you, when we're making spaghetti, we don't want the default squiggle, we want uh, a recorded path. And we'll have, maybe I'll just show you that in another one. I may have already, sounds familiar, I may have already shown you that, I can't remember, but uh, we'll see that at some point <laughs> in these tutorials. It would be easier to do it just with the tool. And, okay, so we've got a path, great. 
we can specify the number of points as well and how, how wide it is, colors, whether it's interactive or not, whether it starts like this and then lets you click on it to see that, or whether it doesn't even let you click on it and just starts like that. Uh, okay, so there's all sorts of options to a squiggle. Uh, right. Well, we just want to drag along it. One thing is we might want to make it uh, bigger. So I'm just getting a deja vu. I've so, shown so many times various tutorials on this and I can't remember. I'm sort of saying, I haven't shown you this already, have I? <laughs> let's, let's just take a look back quickly through our, uh, our, our files here. Uh, open, what have we got? We've got a movie clip, position, animation. Mm, components, loader, assets. Okay, what, what do we do in animation? Do we animate along a squiggle? Props, rewind, true. No, it doesn't look like it. Okay, so I think we're good. <laughs> Let's hope. Uh, close that one down. Oh no, that's the, the window. We want to close that. We want to just close that four and keep the window, which is the F9. Okay, so assuming that we're good, uh, we need something that we can animate along there. A triangle sometimes works like a little arrow, but uh, let's animate a circle along there. So a new circle. And we'll make this a little bit smaller, like I don't know, 30 and red, like so. Uh, dot. It doesn't really matter where we put it because as soon as we add it to the path, it will automatically get added. So even if you center it, it wouldn't really matter. Add, add to just adds it at zero, zero. And then we say dot animate, dot animate. Um, if we want to rewind and loop and stuff, we'll go to the Zim Duo technique right now, right away, because we know hmm, we know right away that there's going to be other things that we're adding in here beyond just our first few parameters. So the first parameter is the props, and we will say uh, along a path. Oh, we have to specify the path. So up here, const path, or whatever we want to call it, and put that in here. In ES6, by the way, you don't even have to do that. If these two things are the same name, you can just say that, but I usually do it for clarity. So the path we want to animate along is this path up here, or we could have called that whatever, you know, bumps. Oh, I don't have multiple edit. Bumps and bumps like that would have been fine. All right, uh, let's just see what it looks like right now. So we go control enter and whoo, yeah, I missed it. <laughs> well, I can refresh, refresh. So there it is animating along the squiggle in one second, whoosh. Okay, first of all, the squiggle's editable, which you know, doesn't look too good because all those sticks are getting in the way. So if we don't want it editable, then in our path right here, we can go immediately to um, doot, 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 interactive colon false. It's kind of funny because we had a bunch of individual things that you can change. You can say, hey, sh uh, don't show the don't show the controls, and then don't toggle the controls. And so that's how we would make it interactive false in early versions of Zim, we would turn off the toggle, we would turn off the showing. And then we did that just so many times that it was like, okay, let's just make an interactive false that we can do with one setting and just turn off all the interactiveness. And then you get, uh, I don't think I saved, oh, maybe I did. And then you get the animation along there. But one thing we might wanna do is rewind. We also wanna drag along it, but let's just show you animating along it, uh, rewind colon true, and then you get this, mm, almost, you get this. Oh, <laughs> didn't keep on going, did it? Because we didn't loop. Okay, where it rewinds, and we can spend a little bit longer doing that too, time colon three seconds maybe, and let's loop as well. Uh, loop colon true, or loop uh, any number of times. I can pause on loops. So, control enter. And then we get a slower movement there where it's going back and forth now. Our little uh, ball on a wave. Oh. Okay, so how about dragging then? If we say drag colon true here, comma, drag colon true, then we get this. 
closing some of those other ones. There it is. It doesn't do anything to start. So in other words, it's paused and then we can drag along along our little bumpies. Okay. You know, so great. <laughs> Super. Yay. Uh, if you want it to animate and drag, which sometimes you do, then you can say by default, if you set drag to true, then start paused goes to um, automatically goes to true. So we want to set that to false now to override it. And now we would get this controller where it's actually animating, but you can also drag it. Cool, huh? I mean, that's pretty amazing. That code is extremely complicated, which might be why I think we're the only framework that has that code. Okay, so that's, uh, as far as I can see out there, that is the most advanced uh, dragging, animating along a, a user editable path. Uh, I don't even know any framework that has an editable path for the public, for the end user. So that's nice. You, this is very helpful. Um, people can, you know, do what you do. Do what you do in Illustrator. Do what you do in Photoshop or in Flash. You can drag Bezier points. Well, we want the end user to be able to do that. And we've got that built right into the Zim library. Okay, so that is animating along a user editable path. Woohoo! Um, we talked a bit about recording a path, but it would be incomplete. Why don't we do that in a future one? Um, uh, that would go in here. You can specify points in here. I may have already shown you a little bit of that, but we can do another tutorial on that later when we have internet. The other thing that you might want to see is we don't have internet, and so how are we running this without internet? Maybe you want to peek at what we're doing. So there's a slight change to the publish settings here. And what we've done is under the HTML right here, we're loading Zim Shim local. So if I import a new, here's Zim Shim right there. That's what we had been using. Here's a Zim Shim local. But to tell you the truth, I made that. It didn't come with the zip. We do have a local folder here. In the local folder is Zim Shim local. But this ZimShim local will work if you're working in this local folder. Are we working in the local folder? No, we're working back inside of Animate, inside of, there's the ZimShim folder, but we're working inside of tutorials. So we need a local template that will work within tutorials and is calling scripts. I think kind of as long as you make the same scripts, it it may copy over, but anyway. So what we've done is we made a different Zim Shim that says, I know you're gonna be looking inside of scripts and inside of scripts, you should be seeing uh, no HTML. I can't change it there. Okay, so let's go to the folder structure here. So here's my tutorials directory on the left. Sorry if that's small for you. There's the scripts folder. And what I've done is I put the create.js and the Zim min these uh, files came from the Zim Shim local scripts. So there's Zim Shim local scripts. It's got Zim docs and Zim create. So slightly different, actually, I guess. You would want, uh, I suppose, if we're only giving you the docs version. I, uh, you know, uh, being the founder of Zim, I have a Zim hanging around here somewhere. So where I got mine from is in the CDN right here. Here's our content delivery network. Here's my local versions of Zim that I can work with. And there's the Zim min that I dragged over. Okay, but you would be dragging uh, the Zim doc. Do you, do you wanna you know, copy this, copy, and I'll put it into the scripts folder here, based like so. I uh, may as well keep it the same. I'll get rid of the, the min. Delete, 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 delete. Boop. Move to trash. Okay, so we've got a Zim doc there. And then uh, in here we would want, is this Zim Shim local? Which one is this? This is the Zim Shim local. Yeah, okay. Then we want doc there. Okay, so you just need to, to match those. Uh, alternatively, which probably, now that I think about it, would work just fine is keep it using the ZimShim local, which looks like this. So here's the ZimShim local. Note that it's got these things in it, the, the paths there. So if we just use the ZimShim local that came with the zip, then we would wanna make sure that the scripts folder from here, copy, 
take that whole thing, take the whole scripts folder that was in local and just move the scripts folder in here. That's probably the best way to do it. So we'll delete this script folder. I kind of done that beforehand and then we paste. Okay, so now your scripts folder matches the, the path that it matches when you were doing it in this local directory. All right, great. So now we can specify not this one. So that means we get rid of the first one that we were working on, which was here. <laughs> Hopefully this all works. Imagine if it doesn't. Uh, zim oh, it's in the ZimShim folder, which is right here. There, oh, that's physics. Uh, ZimShim local and delete that. Move to trash. Okay, so we're gonna use only what's in the zip folder now and point to the ZimShim local, but the trick was we moved a copy of the scripts over into our current folder that we're working in. All right, <laughs> fun, wow. All right, so we're gonna import new and uh, not the ZimShim from here, not my fake ZimShim local that I added here, but uh, the one that is local right there and then press it. I forgot that we added a local one. I went ahead and made it without thinking. So there's our, our local copy now and we hit okay. Uh, will it work? Control enter. Oh, oh, look at that. Okay, we're still working. So that's great. And there's Groovity. All right, so hopefully that has been fun with you. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? That we can drag along a circle. And there's other tricks in here too uh, that you can do to uh, orient and flip. It'll, it'll do that automatically, I think, but also to get smaller as it goes farther away and to get fainter if you want. You can fade it out as it goes away and you can change layers of things so that you can start passing through layers as well. There's also an extra feature which allows you to, uh, it's called extra in here and it allows you to animate to any animation, which is pretty phenomenal. Because what we're doing when we animate, um, say to make it get smaller, is depending on the Y property uh, on, the, on the screen, depending on the Y property, we're changing its scale. Well, we can depend on anything, such as another animation value. So it's very powerful. All right, this has been Dr. Abstract. Hopefully, uh, as mentioned, that you've enjoyed this and uh, welcome uh, to the world of Zim. Please take a look at the previous tutorials and the tutorials to come. Yay, and you're welcome to join us at zimjs.com slash discord, zimjs.com slash slack, if your internet is working. <laughs> We can be found on the internet. Yeah. Okay. Cheers.